Hey everybody, welcome to the Tex-Mex Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Ramirez, and I've got my awesome co-host here, Mando Gomez. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to episode 32, number 32. You know what? Let's get into it. Dale. Dale. <laughs> Dude, last week we were talking about the Apple Vision Pro. What do you think? Did you start going in the in, in the middle of Houston downtown, just shaking your hands like Minority you know Report? I was looking for people. I'm like, hey, man, apparently they're making the glass holes cool again. I mean, that's that's what it seems like. Yeah, because y'all remember, like, back in the day, Google had their little Google eyeglasses. Then Snapchat had their, their yellow shades. And now... We've got the Meta Ray-Bans or whatever, and then we still have the Oculus, but now we've got the Vision Pro. Supposed to be make it, making it cool again. I guess. But Dude, I haven't seen him around. Do you What's see that on? Zuckerberg is, is such a sore loser? <laughs> 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 he actually went in Insta, and he actually was just like, just like bad mouthing. Uh, oh, no, the, the Quest is way better than the Vision Pro. It's a better product. <laughs> <laughs> that's right i think he also said but the, it does have good resolution or something like that like he gave him like a little <laughs> eh, you know <laughs> man it, it, apple is gonna eat their lunch like big time they always yeah. the quality of products i know that you're not a, an apple guy right you don't like you don't like their products but I, i'll tell you um, they have good quality like everything like no no screws you know very thin mm -hmm. and, and they said the prices like literally 3500 bucks you know it's, it's it's pricey for a device like that that's right that's the interesting piece there well you know what maybe that's just like their first version it's going to be 3500 then eventually it'll come down i don't know man maybe it's just there it's like uh, maybe they can do a, a cheaper a che <laughs> inflation too right <laughs> but yeah it that's always surprised me that the the cloud that they have this company in the branding Mm -hmm. It's just they just this this is what we are and this is what we are charging and take it or leave it right and people are taking them. Yeah, well, that's that's I, I, at least that's what it seems like. I think uh, people are maybe still in that honeymoon period where they you know you you get the high from the dopamine from actually buying this thing. You stood in line, you know, everyone's like, oh, I want to see it and everything like that. But I will tell you what, Mondo, I started seeing some reports of people already starting to return it after one week. What's going on with that? What do you think that's I about? Think, I think that is because the ecosystem is empty. Like mm. there is nothing. They're, the same things they're there. I have a friend that he's into mobile applications. Like he has been building mobile applications for years. And I say, dude, why you don't switch to start actually building applications for, mm. and they call it spatial. Like the... the spatial the computing. Spa that's right. Spatial computing, right? So, and, and, uh, I think that that's a good a good play. If you are into programming and things like that, spend some time on 3D rendering and all of that because I think that that's the new ecosystem. We saw it when mobile was coming up with uh, with the iTunes and and all of the applications, and it's just you have a decade of different uh, and and the paradigm to switch from an application which is flat to mm -hmm. to a, a movement like this. I think that it will. We'll check up. And yes, I can see people saying, well, this is cool, but I don't have anything to do, right? Like uh, there is no collaboration. There is no applications. There there are no, uh, and games, right? Even the only applications right now are their games. So yeah. the interesting thing will be to to create applications so that way you can just keep the, the headset for several hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think that that's my, that's my thinking that right now there is, the ecosystem is empty. Yeah, I, th I think you're onto something there. I mean, from some of the reports that I saw, right, the people that were returning it after a week, they're like, okay, I bought it, I used it, what do I do now? It's like, um, I don't know if they're thinking they want to use it within their daily workflow, like, you know, to actually do work. I saw several people on YouTube doing um, like their office setups with mm -hmm. with the uh, Apple Pro, right? They have their, they've got their YouTube screen up here. They've got their computer screen. And by the way, that actually is, they have some pretty cool technology there where they're able to mirror uh, their Apple, their Apple screen, like from their laptop or their desktop, they're able to yeah. mirror it inside the Vision Pro. So you're not actually just looking at it down there, but it 
it puts the screen inside. So that's that's pretty cool. They would set up like some games on some, you know, on the side. So if they want to play chess, things like that. Like they're trying to bring what they would have normally within their physical world into their mm-hmm. Vision Pro world, which I, I totally get. I saw some, there were some early bugs like, uh, like if you set up too many screens, it would reboot or bog down. I think they did already do some type of firmware upgrade or driver upgrade or something. And, um, that's fixed now. So there's, they're steadily improving it, but I, I think you're onto something like, it's like, once you get past that initial, like, oh man, this thing is so cool. I just bought it. It's like, what's really next. I think the people that are trying to build their daily workflow within it they're going to stick to it. But the people that bought it as kind of the novelty, just to see what it's all about. Those are probably the first ones that are going to start <clears throat> to return it. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine FaceTimed me and he mm-hmm. was on the, on the device mm-hmm. and actually it creates an avatar that is like a AI avatar. It looks kind of weird, mm-hmm. but it looks way better than the metas or Zuck. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> Sucks avatar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, it's just kind of kind of weird looking, almost like an emoji, but it's like very AI, very mm-hmm. like a like a, a cartoonish, but a, a still three D ish. But yeah, uh, and he and all of the it worked. I was looking into FaceTime, and he was in his avatar, and then I was able to see what he was seeing on the on um, on the device. So that was pretty cool in my mind. Mm-hmm. But again, I I quickly realized, all right, what else you can do. And they only have a set of um, uh, backgrounds, right? Because you are now in this special world, in this realm. And and then you only can choose like, then you can choose like uh, some places. And they are pretty realistic, pretty good. But mm-hmm. uh, that's one of the things that I I think that is missing, that you cannot uh, set the environment. Dude, I like Rick and Morty. I would love to have a... <laughs> <laughs> a space, you know, like a, like Rick and Morty. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard, right? Like they, they haven't opened the SDKs or they haven't done it. So uh, until they do that, probably I'm going to get mine. The other thing that I was noticing, though, is that the ads, mm-hmm. uh, some people are thinking that it's transparent, that it's like glass. Oh, it, oh like, like physically, like you could see through it. Yes. And no, it's actually, it was part of their advertisement uh, to see. And even if you go to Apple, you see the person like seeing the eyes of the person that is wearing it. No, Mm -hmm. what it happens is that it has a display on the front so they can put, I'll say maybe any image that they can. And sure, they can put your eyes, I guess, because they have (laughs) cameras outside and inside too. So, um, and the reason why they have some of these cameras is just to sense where you're looking because you can actually uh, touch the keyboard with your eyes. Mm-hmm. So literally you are like looking around um, the, the keyboard inside of the um, of the Vision Pro and then you can actually type there. It's very clunky actually typing. I was looking on my friend how mm-hmm. he was typing and he was like trying to just move the, the gestures. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, you're like typing like <laughs> super slow now. So they have to, and obviously Siri, right? Siri was there, but uh, Siri sucks. We all know that. So I think that uh, now with AI, I think that you're going to see this merge of all of these different technologies between AI and the prompts and the um, and all of this uh, VR. So nice conver- the converge of these technologies are are nice. Yeah, definitely. We're I think for it to really be successful, we're going to need that convergence. Um, and it's going to take all of it to make it feel natural and, and seamless. But, um, you know, I, I think it is pretty interesting about how you mentioned like, the what they show on the front is you, it can be the your eyes, but I think it's because they maybe Apple's envisioning at some point you know lots of people are wearing these things and it's going to become maybe part of their normal life, and so when you walk up to someone. It's going to be weird if you're talking to them face to face and they see like some <laughs> video ad playing or something, you know, it makes sense to show yeah. your face. Uh, so yeah. there's some sense of connection there. So I think maybe that's why they're doing that. It would be neat if it could automatically sense when you come face to face with someone. So it automatically shows your face. I'm sure they're working that's on stuff right. like that. But yeah, uh, I will one. say, I will say that this week, like I, I showed you guys last week, um, my old uh, Samsung Oculus Gear VR, whatever it's called. Um, I I actually ran it this week and I'm like, oh man, this thing sucks. Um, <laughs> I think last week I was saying, no, it was pretty good, but no, um, it, it does kind of suck. But I mean, 
Dude, we're, that's like a realize. ten years ten years ago, right? Technology. Yeah, it's 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 some old technology. Actually, I had an old uh, what was it? Uh, an uh, Samsung Galaxy S six Pro, something like that. Um, that's the phone that I was using with it. So I don't know how old that thing is. It's probably I don't know, maybe seven eight years old. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's very pixelated. Um, so you you can definitely definitely see the screen door effect. Um, it's a little laggy. Maybe you know it's not super responsive. The 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 environment that you're in is very limited. You can say I want to you know watch only certain things. A lot of the a lot of the use is just through a web browser. So if you want Netflix, you have to go Netflix.com. Um, if you want to you know go to YouTube, it's going YouTube.com. Um, so you know, it was very, very limited. However, I could put up a screen that was like very large equivalent to like, you know, a hundred inch screen or something like that. So it's a cheap way of, if you want a big screen and you don't want to, well, actually I say cheap, but the pro, <laughs> uh, the Apple pro vision pro is like almost four grand. Um, so I guess not that cheap, a uh, projector, you could pro a projector setup is probably around the same, you know, almost four grand. So I don't know. I don't I don't know. But just to say that the technology has come a long way from that Samsung Oc Oculus Pro, Vision Pro, whatever, or whatever it's called, it, it has come a long way. And back then it was really cool just as a novelty. Hopefully Apple can push it past that novelty stage and have people that are actually using it uh, day to day. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll keep watching how it develops and, and we'll bring you some, uh, some of the latest. Yeah. Let's move to the next device that is a novelty. <laughs> Cyber trucks, baby. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Speaking of products not not fulfilling their uh, <laughs> their purpose here, uh, for those of y'all that haven't seen this, the Cyber Truck is rusty or it's rusting. Have you seen any pictures of this, Mando? Yeah, uh, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes I feel that maybe some of these things are hoax. Um, but uh, I think that they maybe are into something. Um, there are reports that there are some cyber trucks that they are rusting already, not even a year, right? Like only a few months. <laughs> <laughs> Within a week of delivery, oh, Mondo. Crap. So, okay. yeah, so there's there's something going on here. Um, there's been some people, and again, this is still very early, so there aren't any concrete um, answers here, but some people have said that they think. Um, it's not actually the cyber truck that's rusting. It's like there's a uh, remnants of either the manufacturing process or like the shipping process, um, where there's like maybe small bits of metal, um, that are landing on the cyber truck and they essentially stick to the truck. Um, and once you drive it in the rain or get in some super humid environment, those little pieces are actually what's starting to rust. So it's not necessarily mm -hmm. the cyber truck itself from what we can tell early on, but it's these little specks of metal or whatever. Um, so that's what we're so seeing is if you is buff it up, it actually cleans. Maybe so, if you clean it up, yeah. Yeah, so what they're saying is like a normal car wash, like that's that's not gonna cut it. That probably will make the wrestling worse, right? Um, mm. What people are actually resorting to is using uh, Barkeeper's Friend, they call it BKF, I think. Um, mm. And it's like a stainless steel polish, basically. So you're basically having to wax your truck with this stuff yeah. to cut. And it's it's a polishing agent, so it's a cutting agent. So it's actually taking like a top layer off of the stainless steel on your truck to get the rust off. Now, it does seem to work pretty well. The thing that's unclear, though, is this going to be like a normal maintenance thing that you have to do? Um, or else you're going to have these rust spots or if this is kind of a one-time thing that happens only like after delivery or things like that. That's what part's still kind of unclear. <laughs> it's like when you get a furniture that they do it like a antique. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be your cyber truck is like a distress. It yeah, is. it's distress. <laughs> it's going to get that patina that makes it look uh, uh, vintage. <laughs> exactly. It's a vintage uh, cyber truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so but here's the thing people have told uh tesla they're like hey like what's up my tesla's a week old and it's resting so they're submitting these uh requests back to tesla and tesla's actually uh saying okay like yes this is an actual issue so they're actually saying we hear you we don't have a solution yet 
uh, from what uh, there was a Reddit poster online that said that Tesla mm-hmm. said, hey, we're getting some equipment in here within the next couple of weeks. We'll let you know and we'll we'll uh, have you bring your truck in and we'll take care of it. So I think yep. they're becoming aware of this issue. And I think it seems like they're going to take care of it. Hopefully they they put this as part of their finishing process. So, yeah. you know, you people don't have to deal with this as they get their brand it, new truck. Right. It might be the, when they are pressing the the material, right, the stainless steel, that maybe even the actual portions of the machine that is pressing the, the press literally might stick onto that. And that's maybe if that's the case, if there is another material that is actually getting roasted. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's, point. It could be part of the the stamping press uh, that's that's leaving some some stuff there. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Here's the thing: on my Tesla, it's kind of funny. Uh, you, I can see, I can see all the circle suction marks on the windshield from when they installed it. Like I can still see it. They didn't clean that up. <clears throat> it's on the windshield. You can see it like in certain light and stuff like that. All the little suction marks of when they place the windshield into the car. So obviously you have to wash your car, Eric. <laughs> no, no, no. And it doesn't come off. I, I mean, really? you know, it's not like I'm like scrubbing real hard, but I go through the car wash and it's not rushing it off. I've cleaned it from the inside. It's not coming off. So I don't know what normal car dealerships do if they use some 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 type of stronger like uh, agent to clean it up, but my my car still has that. My Tesla still has that after a year. You know, <laughs> you can see all the suction marks from when they place the windshield. So Tesla obviously they don't care too much about that. They're pushing some of that onto the customer. Uh, so I could see maybe this is going to be one of those things. You just have to polish mm-hmm. your, your truck every month or something like that, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of a stainless steel exterior. A lot of people are probably going to end up just wrapping it, spend the yeah. extra six grand, wrap it so they don't have to deal with that, which uh, seems kind of silly. Well, we'll keep watching to see what's the outcome of that. Yeah, for sure. Well, and a little bit brighter news for this week. Uh, moving into Bitcoin hit 50K this last week. What I tell pump you last it week? Up. You got to pump, pump it up. It up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, super exciting news. It crossed 50K. This is like the highest that it's been over the last couple of years. It's been two years so since we've hit this number. So everyone's super excited. And in fact, it actually went over 50k it went up to almost 53 53. it got like 52 and a half um i think during the week it's come down a little bit since then but you know it seems to be trading sideways at this at this point around the 52k mark 52 52k i mean it's 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 approaching where uh the dgens not sure if the audience don't know who are the (laughs) dgens that's my dj name by the way (laughs) og dj og dj in the house <laughs> Explain the audience why you are the OG DJ. <laughs> okay, well the DJs are usually that like are betting the house on it. So they don't have like, you know, the one percent, three percent allocation on no, crypto like Bitcoin the safe way. All in, right? They're putting it like all a, in, baby. It's like a, I, I I'm I'm going to college and your college tuition. <laughs> It's all in in Bitcoin. By the way, we are not to we are to do it in the internet. Full disclosure. <laughs> They're taking out a mortgage on their house. It's like, ah, oh, cash out refi. Let's buy some Bitcoin. Four hundred one k. Screw it. You know? <laughs> that's a DJ. Uh, that's a DJ. You find a lot of those guys on Wall Street bets too. So, <laughs> yes, for sure. So, so I think that when it, it gets to a price where. Uh, they are feeling the FOMO, which is equivalent equivalent to a fear of missing out. Yeah, uh, that's when it's like, man, I need to, I need to buy Bitcoin or crypto, right? And then they, you start seeing the price just going like bananas, parabolic. So exactly, I think that maybe in seventy five, that's when people is gonna start thinking, okay, I'm missing the boat, and that's what is, in my opinion, that will propel to to get to the 100k uh, per bitcoin yeah definitely now there's still some people right now though that are calling for like this final drawdown this final dip i think we already had it when we did from when we went from 49 to 39 that was a pretty much a 20 percent dip uh dip which is kind of in line with what we see filed uh prior to like the push-up it may have come a little early but 
you, you don't really quite know like all the ETF stuff that's going on that could have happened, made it happen a little bit earlier. So, but so some people that that's still a debate right now. Have we had that final dip before the, this rush up or have we already had it with that 39 or that 49 to 39 K dip? So um, we saw some pretty consistent upward pressure mm -hmm. um, right before, you know, when we went, when we, on our run up from down from 39 now up into 52 52k yeah. i mean that that was a big push up right so um I, I think a lot of people are thinking this is it yeah i i i agree with that but anyways we don't know right and it's, it's very always like anything else you cannot predict these things right we have been mentioning it that doesn't matter the investment you have to let it play right to it's just time let the season and and you'll be fine right with some of these um uh, yeah. investment so yeah. i think that the other one that we are looking is um the supply shock it's like uh basically all of the, the sellers that they were there the big ones mm -hmm. um they they are literally finished selling that's the reason why and and the supply there is no supply uh, once in april uh, when we have the the halving there's not going to be more bitcoins to to sell into the market remember the miners are providing some of this supply and once that the miners don't have supply that they are mining, which is only the the last the last bitcoins, then it's gonna be kind of that's what is propelling um, kind of the halving and propelling the next the next price jump. Yeah. So exciting times are coming. Uh, I think that's why a lot of people, uh, a lot of your your <laughs> your your bull proponents, they're saying you know. You know, once we get to 100K, sky's the limit. We're going to hit 500K, 600K, even a million, a million dollars within this bull run. This And the bull runs usually go into probably late 2025. So we're talking about over the next, like, you know, year and a half, we're going to see this price rise. So um, <clears throat> a lot of people are getting super excited. I think even Senator Elizabeth Warren is getting excited. She even decreed <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto as this genius that invented Bitcoin with some official documentation out there. Have you seen that? Oh man, like yeah, it, it's it's just surprising to me how these people, like ten years ago, it's like oh, this is only for criminals and like drug dealers, right? And and now it's like oh, this guy is like a, a whoever invented um, Bitcoin is like a good for humanity. It's it's just surprising to me how they're flipping right from from literally one end to the other end in the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it's just so funny. Uh for those of y'all that aren't aware, Senator Elizabeth Warren has uh, historically been like super anti-Bitcoin. And a lot of the rumors are that she's been the one that's been pressuring like uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, some of like the vanguards of the, of the world to like not support Bitcoin. Right. They're like, no, you got to be anti-Bitcoin along with uh, Bank of America and stuff like that. Some of some of these bigger banks that have been contributing to her um uh, to her campaign. So there's some kind of give and take there. So I will say this is very weird for us coming out of uh, Warren's camp. If this is true. Now I have seen some rumblings online that say, maybe it's a hoax. Like apparently you can go out and buy uh, these certificates <laughs> that have, that look very official with these flags that say, sure. you know, you could put whatever you want on there. So it might be a, a clever, a clever Bitcoiner out there that's trying to pump it up, pump that price up <laughs> by getting uh, Elizabeth Warren on, <laughs> on board to to join the bandwagon here. Yeah, uh, the guy that is uh, one of the crypto bulls is Michael Saylor, right? Man, his bet already netted four billions. Um, he has a nice stash. I mean, about 200,000 uh, Bitcoins, which basically puts him almost in a, a four billion. Um, must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice. You know. You know what? The <laughs> other one that was interesting is BlackRock. Yeah. BlackRock. We have been discussing in the pod, right? Now, with one month, maybe two months, now they have a hundred and ten bitcoins in their stash. Hundred ten thousand bitcoins. True. Yeah. Hundred and ten thousand bitcoins. That is crazy. You know what? Okay, so if you're comparing Michael Saylor, right? He's one of the OG DJs, right? He's he's in my camp, um, he, right? He he's one of the uh, visionaries that said this thing's going parabolic. Cause here's the thing, uh, he was anti Bitcoin like at the very very early. Also, he didn't really understand it. Once he understood it, he's like, oh man, this is game theory. It's gonna play out. I'm getting in. I'm making my bet. 
Now he's up four billion. He's got two hundred thousand bitcoins. Took him four years, but guess what? Four years. BlackRock, BlackRock, half of what Michael Saylor has done in just one month. One <laughs> month, BlackRock has done half of what took Michael Saylor four years to do. Isn't that Dude, crazy? Is there a game? Like you're saying game theory? Well, guess what? Is there a game? <laughs> 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 they invented it right <laughs> yeah yeah so uh i yeah i saw that coming right like when black rock um it was going into in this into this game it's like well there are some nuances right but it will help to to kind of uh um democratize it because they're going to start pushing it into 401ks and and basically like you're going to have a slice even whether even you know because sometimes that what happens. Like uh, you have these hedge funds that they are um, investing for the um, for the pensions, and maybe it's a teacher there out there that has Bitcoin in their stash on their uh, pension fund, and even sometimes maybe even, even without them knowing, because actually the uh, the hedge fund manager is just trying to to have a, a product that it doesn't relate to anything else, right? And mm -hmm. in this case, Bitcoin is going to be that product that in theory is not going to be um, correlated with any of the other products. Yeah. So it's super interesting. I, I think, and, you know, we've been saying this is coming for a long time, right? And so institutional investors are coming. Um, and here's the thing. They're just dipping their toe. They're just dipping their pinky toe into it right now. And they've already, they've already done so much in just one month. This is just the very, very start of institutional investment. So if you can, if you can extrapolate that out, you can kind of see what's coming. So yeah. this is super, super exciting. I mean, it's, it's going to be really good news, I think, for, uh, for this all around. And you know what? You know who else has seen this coming? Mm. Craig Wright. <laughs> <laughs> we said that that guy's a fool, but you know what? <laughs> the guy's a fool with twenty-two billions. I mean, he's <laughs> that's right. We had to look it up because we're like, how is he funding all this this court stuff and uh, all the lawyers and everything? Okay, he has one point one million Bitcoin. This guy has that's twenty-two it? billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, you know, he just got a little over a million Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's not a, that big. Right? Yeah, it's like almost like yes, it's a it's a big chunk, right? So um, yeah, so he has five times the amount that Michael Saylor does, right, and ten times the amount that BlackRock does. So this guy has deep pockets, and that's how he's able to kind of uh, keep keep this charade going on, this tomfoolery that's going on. He's he keeps pushing it, you know. But you know what? You know, don't lie, Craig. Don't lie, Craig. This. This is not your. This is not your show. You are not Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> yeah, and, and justice will prevail because this guy started all of this in 2016. That he claims that he is Satoshi, mm -hmm. and and I was thinking, why why this guy? I mean, he already made his fortune, right? But I think that talking to you, we were discussing this, and it's like you were saying that he wants to have a. His legacy, right? Yeah. Well, he's getting a legacy right now. He's getting that legacy of being a fool uh, instead of, I think, what he was going after. Yes, because uh, he also uh, was suing or is suing the, the 13 Bitcoin developers to literally, and this is what the COPA, there is a COPA um, mm -hmm. organization, which stands for the Cryptocurrency Open Patent Alliance. And you have all of these different companies like, a, like Block, and like Coinbase and all of these companies that they are just saying, hey, we're building this for humanity, right? It's like Bitcoin is for humans. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this guy's like, oh, I'm Satoshi, right? And he's trying to get the name rights for Bitcoin. That's that's ultimately his game. Um, but yeah, uh, so far he's losing in, in court and which... Yeah. Well, you know, if his goal was to have his name synonymous with Bitcoin, I think he will certainly be there as a footnote. I mean... I say he's a fool, but he's a rich fool. So he's got, he, he does have that $22 billion and, and and it's only growing. You know, at this point, if he holds on to it, he he could potentially become a, a trillionaire at some point. So it's it's really only a matter of a matter of time, maybe. So uh so so really interesting there. But I will say, like from the court proceedings, at least the summaries that we've seen, this is why we're saying, you know. He's likely not Satoshi Nakamoto is because one, he can't move the Bitcoin, right? That would be one simple thing he could do um, is just move it from his address. Even if it's just, you know, a Satoshi, just move a little bit to prove it. He can't do that. 
Uh, another thing that they showed up in court was number two was he couldn't explain the code. Uh, a lot of the code isn't necessarily commented out. Um, and he's not able to explain what these pieces mean. He's able to explain maybe the parts that do have the comment, right? That's, that's a little bit easier, but he's not able to clearly, um, say what some of the code is supposed to do within, um, within Bitcoin. So that's another indication. This guy is not Satoshi Nakamoto, the one that created the Bitcoin. And then <clears throat> third, he can't, he says he cannot remember who he sent some of that early Bitcoin to. Um, if he was Satoshi Nakamoto. So there's some, those are some three pretty basic things to disprove why he's not Satoshi. Um, so I, I think it, he's making the case right there that he's not Satoshi and he's getting ready for uh, a loss in court. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll keep watching it. Yeah. Well, uh, so we'll keep y'all updated with that. You know, what's another kind of interesting thing. And we touched a little bit on it last week when we we're talking about some of the Super Bowl ads is there's a lot of AI stuff that's going on right now. So in the Super Bowl, we said that they were going to do some AI ads. There are a couple, but not, I didn't think they were that big, but one of the interesting things that I saw was Burger King is stepping into the AI arena. Have you seen any of this? No, no. Tell me. Tell me about it. Yeah. So uh, with Burger King, what they what they're doing is they're doing ads. And, you know, usually when you put the ads, you know, you for hamburgers, you got to you got to uh, make your fake hamburger, make it look good. You're going to take mm -hmm. pictures. You're going to use that in your ad. They skipped all that. They mm -hmm. skipped all that. They use AI to make the burgers that are going in their commercials and in their ads. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's a Whopper okay. generator. It's a Whopper generator. <laughs> <laughs> all right does and, it look you know good what? and they're not hiding it they're not hiding it they're saying hey you know what they actually did a contest out of it and you know i'm i'm not i haven't I actually haven't had a burger king burger in probably about 15 years so <laughs> i i haven't done that um in a while but they've got this burger contest we're saying hey you pick uh, because their motto is have it your way right Mm -hmm. um, at Burger King, you can have it your way. So they've got this uh, burger generator where you pick what ingredients you want on your Whopper. Then they give you eight choices, and then they AI generate your your what uh, your Whopper. I'm thinking what a burger. They, you generate your Whopper, and they they put that. They give it to you. You can put it in your social media and all this kind of stuff. So it's very interesting now how you know we're saying AI is coming a little bit more into the mainstream. How people are starting to use it, and I think this is a brilliant way of of using it. Burger King. I mean, you have to use the tools there, right? So as man as well. So kudos for them for being in the in the edge, and maybe we'll start seeing other companies utilizing it. Talking about AI and images, dude, you saw the Sora text to image from uh, OpenAI. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. I, I saw I saw it on the news. This one, and they were uh, showing a video of a drone. Just those typical. Um, videos that you see for travel and, and all of that, you know, just going around the whole uh, terrain. Mm -hmm. It was AI. The, the drone didn't exist. <laughs> 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 neither, neither, the, neither the beach that they were just presenting. It was generated by AI. And let me tell you, it was freaking real. Like uh, you can, you couldn't tell. It was not grainy. You know, it was, it was very, very legit, which, Basically, the idea is that you have this prompt, like similar to, to ChatGPT, mm -hmm. and it will spit out a 60 seconds video for uh, for Sora. So it's like, I'm thinking myself, like, man, there's going to be more like people like losing their jobs, animators, you know, like uh, music producers, all of these people across all of these uh, endeavor is like, they don't have to right now. Somebody just can just start thinking the story and they can just start stitching it very, very quickly. It's it's, it's going to be interesting that maybe in some point they'll do the, like the deep fake, but with real artists, like let's say that they just are picking up Brad Pitt and it's like when he was young, it's like, hey, can we use you with your face when you were young and and just do a movie? But yeah, sure. I mean, just give me my rights. So even the actors might not even have to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is getting to be very exciting in this space. So for those of y'all that haven't seen these videos yet, you can Google S O R A Sora. That's what uh, they named it, coming from uh, OpenAI. Um, so check it out. 
here's the thing. I saw I saw a, a review by MKBHD, uh, Marquez Brownlee, right? Um, on his channel and it was very very cool there's this one image or this one sorry this one video of a lady walking through uh it looks like a, a tokyo with you know with kind of all the the lights up and things like that this image looked amazing i will tell you it looked amazing okay so here's the thing though the prompt i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what the prompt was or at least at least um uh, pretty close here it says uh, create a video of a woman walking down the alley with warm neon lights advertising in Tokyo wearing a red dress and boots. And out of that prompt, which was literally just one sentence long, it created the 60 second video. The realism in this outstanding, all of the, the lights interacting, all of that realistic. It is going to be crazy going to be crazy coming up and here's the thing so if you're not looking for it you would think that is a literal real video of someone walking down something that would cost a whole production company tons of money to create right and so here's the rumors the rumors are that this is what got sam altman kicked out right a while back when when was that like um Oh, almost so, maybe three, four months, four months. Yeah, maybe like that. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> several months ago, right? Towards yeah. the end of the year, right? Um, that's what they're saying because the capability here is very, very high. And remember, they were they were saying, "Oh, it's because we we're worried about the safety and blah blah blah." Like to like what you said, Mondo. It's the they're worried about maybe like deep fakes coming out of this technology, and they're saying, "Are we ready to release this to the world?" So Sora has not been released yet. It's getting close. So these are like previews yeah. that they're letting out. Um, yeah. Are we ready for having this technology out there where people are able to create all this stuff and people aren't going to be able to show what's real and what's not? What, with technology, though, what happens is that uh, once that the engineers have seen it and they understand it, it is out there, right? So it's like, and, and actually it becomes a goal of somebody's like, if OpenAI can do it, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so That's you have right. a, a an engineer there in their in their garage or whatever, right? Just trying to build the same technology, and I think that uh, the the part that I um I, I agree, the deep fakes are gonna be insane. You're gonna see like freaking Donald Trump saying something, but it might be a deep fake, right? Or you might see another president and maybe some big arguments and things like that, because everything again is is, is fake, and I don't think that we have the proper tooling to to detect deep fakes right so obviously there are companies that they are getting built to try to detect that um but yeah we're still not a hundred percent solid on the solutions right and and yes it could be one of the reasons why maybe sam alman got kicked out but you know i really think that uh sometimes technology once that the rabbit is out of the <laughs> out of the hat you cannot get it by right right <laughs> Right. And, and I think that that's what is happening here. Yeah, those pesky rabbits. Um, so, yeah, for sure. I think that's where we're at as well. Here's one thing. Have you have you seen have you seen that video uh, from a year ago about where they prompted uh, the AI to create a video of Will Smith eating spaghetti? Have yes. you seen this? I have seen it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like all garbled. He's using yeah, yeah, his yeah. hands and it doesn't even make sense. There's spaghetti all over the place. This is from one year ago. Look it up. Look up what that looks like compared to what we're seeing now. This is in one year's time span. What they're saying is that the more compute power, the more compute power that you're able to put into the system, like just building bigger computers, faster computers, it gets even better. It gets even yep. more detailed. Previously, this wasn't the case. It's like when they were doing the, the large language models, like the... Um, uh, that stuff with chat gpt more parameters weren't making it better or stronger they said there was kind of this diminishing returns but mm -hmm. what they're seeing with this is that actually just the more computer compute power you put to it it's actually getting a lot better so yeah. um yeah. did you see also the other news of sam altman asking for this seven trillion dollars for chips in the u.s trillion no trillion no, really. he's wow. asking trillion um yeah he's saying we need this for the future. Um, and he's being very vague, but I think we can see kind of what's coming out of this is that uh, he wants to be the leader 
in the whole world and use it kind of defensively. And so he's asking for $7 trillion to kind of um, get to, get to it, I guess, probably first and faster, knowing that the only limitation is just compute hardware. Yeah. I, I think that um, That's what for the audience, um, they realize that uh, with a lot of compute, it can, it can, because they, and originally when they were building these uh, algorithms for AI, they were trying to make um, the algorithm, the program to be like super efficient and all of that to be able to come up with the, with the general AI. One of the things that they stumbled upon is almost like brute force, like just trying many, 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 because computers are pretty good, like uh, compared to our own compute power on our brains, we cannot sometimes even calculate like big math, right? So all of that processing computers are way, way, way better. So what they notice with AI is that literally with a lot of compute, even on brute force, they get to the solution. And that's the reason why it's literally doing trial and error, trial and error many, many, many times, and they're getting to the solution. That that's the reason why with a lot of compute, a lot of computers, they're able to uh, to get into a, a proper solution for these problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting. So, yeah, I think that he's he sees this as a brute force problem. More compute, more hardware, the better it's going to get. Do you remember this other side project? We only maybe mentioned it here once. Uh, I think it was called World Coin that saw, yes. Sam Altman was bringing, and Sam he was Altman trying to mm -hmm. scan people's eyes. I don't know. There's some weirdness around that. Where, whatever happened with that? Do you know? I, actually, I'm not too sure. Um, I think that you still can register and I still can get your uh, uh, your ID. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that he wanted to to literally identify everyone, and that you are you who you who you say that you are. Which I think that um, with this AI world. I think that will be a nice thing, you know, to say, hey, this is the fake. Maybe you never want to be able to tell that is me, right? Um, but maybe when when you have the credits, hey, you use something that I didn't give you my right, which is my ID. And only mm -hmm. with my key that I'm giving you a right, then you can use it or not. So I think that maybe that will be the only way that you can kind of... Uh, um, do this type of things, right? Where you are giving permissions or rights for to be able to use your face. Yeah. Well, either way, I think we're seeing um, some of the vision that Sam Altman has. I think we haven't really quite stitched everything together. And maybe that's why some of these people were freaking out a little bit with him because yeah. they maybe he shared with them like what he thought we could do and they didn't like it. Um, so <clears throat> anyways, lots of interesting stuff coming around with, with this AI and this Sora. I tried to see if there was a, something out there already in GitHub that it kind of does something close, but I don't think anything is near, near close to this. And plus I think you need like some, uh, an obscene amount of, um, GPUs. So I don't have that kind of system to run it. I'm still running my own, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all have noticed some of our thumbnails have like AI versions of us. They're not all us. Right. <laughs> so I've been running some models on, uh, locally, um, to do that. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can really get into the next, next generation stuff without a new system. Yeah. You're going to have to get into a supercomputer there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to rent some some time on on uh, on some other uh, cluster. Yep, for sure. All right. Next section, <laughs> though. The Billionaire's Watch. This week in Billionaire's Watch. <laughs> what are they well, doing? <laughs> hey, billionaires, man, they're they're. They're always doing good. Um, but you know what? Uh, you know who? what billionaire I saw recently um, at the Super Bowl? Which one? Your buddy Jack. Jack Dorsey. Man. Dude, uh, a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to meet all of these high profile, right, people. He's cool, man. Like in, in, in literally, it was a type of person that I will hang out with, you know, like. You know, like, this guy is fun, you know? He goes to Burning Man. <laughs> he has the hippie look. <laughs> so, yeah, and the guy is mellow. He's like, you know, chill. Life is good, you know? Like a very, very uh, good approach compared to others that, that I have met, right? Like, uh, yeah. His net worth is um, $4.4 4 billions. 
So if I had four point four billion, I'd be pretty mellow too. I think. <laughs> actually, no, I don't know. I don't, I'd actually dude. be pushing forward. You know, my Tex Mex <laughs> podcast would be a little bit different, maybe. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you're gonna be like the Craig Wright, right? Like, no, oh, you know, <laughs> suing people around. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, but you know what? So Jack, your buddy Jack Dorsey, he actually did a favor to all those uh, um, uh, Bitcoiners out there because, uh, right, I mentioned that there were no ads for for crypto or Bitcoin this year in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He wore his Satoshi shirt. So there's this like famous Nirvana shirt, right? Um, uh, but there's one he there's this one that you can buy that has Satoshi on there, and you know it just it looks really cool. It's kind of an iconic look. And so he he put that out there. He was in the suite with Beyonce and and Jay Z. So he had a lot of there was a lot of TV time there. I mean, he was battling out with uh, the Tater Swift crowd, the Swifties. But he got some <laughs> he got some TV time with the Satoshi shirt on. <laughs> no bad. And and the ones that they don't know who is Jack Dorsey, he was the founder of Twitter. So he he basically kind of originally uh, created that product, right? So and that's how he got his money. And now he's the CEO. In some point, he was a CEO for Twitter and CEO for Square, which they changed the name to Block. So, and he has been a huge proponent of um, of Bitcoin. Yeah, I got a cease and desist from uh, Jack Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> Your buddy sent me a cease and desist, Mando. Good. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably you were not something good. What did you do? <laughs> oh man, yeah, we're working on a little project called like Square Bitcoin. They didn't. Really uh, like you just, you just copy Square. the name, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He shut That's us so down, man. He shut us down. What happened? <laughs> yeah. You were mentioning that was pretty fast too, right? Like in like a month. Like a they, month. They, they were they were on it. But now knowing back then I didn't know or we didn't know that Jack Dorsey was in on this crypto space. Like he's aware of it and stuff like that. Sometimes they're not aware of it. So he was mm -hmm. obviously, you know, thinking about it, strategizing it. They were keeping an eye, make sure that Square and Bitcoin or crypto did not did not um show up on any of the websites which we bought we we created one and yeah he caught us right away and sent the cease and desist so we ended up doing like cryptocash.com or something like that it didn't yeah. end up going anywhere but um <laughs> yeah yeah that's a that's a good one talking about jack dorsey and all of these uh, uh the other billionaire is is um a mosque right so elon uh, i was looking in one of the episodes from joe rogan and, and Joe Rogan asked him, it's like, hey, uh, would you actually make the surgery for putting a neural link in you? And he actually say, yeah. <laughs> What's he going to say? I, He's not going to say like, hell no. Oh, man. It's like, uh, knowing him, he actually would say maybe something else. But I was thinking, uh, he's thinking maybe until he has one billion people with the implants. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably i mean it makes sense he doesn't want to be the guinea pig let other people the non-billionaires be the guinea pigs yeah you know what i was thinking if i start getting like dementia some something like uh, alzheimer something something like that mm -hmm. why not you know like already my brain is all like toasted yeah why not there's there you <laughs> gotta it, do a benefit it analysis it. here right <laughs> <laughs> For yeah sure. That was the other billionaire on the radar. And the other one, this is an interesting one too. Uh, uh, the top 15 billionaires, they are building bunkers. Yeah. Do you think that they're bunker? There's, <laughs> they're bunkers? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a little conspiracy theory stuff, right? It's like, okay, all of these, like you said, they all have their WhatsApp, right? Where all the billionaires talk to each other, right? Uh, I'm and not there yet, on but the same page. one day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> our invitations are stuck in the mail or something but um <laughs> maybe <laughs> you know they're all talking they're like hey what you doing this weekend i'm building a bunker bro why are you building a bunker well you know and then they they just start talking back and forth and now they're all building bunkers right and keep in mind like uh some of the stuff out there uh, well maybe we we can uh link the story that we found this on the, 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 there's another youtuber that that kind of keeps track of some of this stuff they're, these are not like a super extravagant bunkers. They seem to be kind of like maybe just short term bunkers and things like that. What it's a, it's a short term that? bunker. <laughs> it's like maybe I'm short expecting term, like know. because the, the space is like only like I mean it's pretty 
big for a bunker, but like 3,000, 5,000 square foot underground. Mm -hmm. So, it, but I, that leads me to think that maybe it's only like for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, which I don't know, man, is maybe radiation or maybe some, some event like that where they just know that it's happening and they just they get into, um, to their bunker. And then when they finish, they come back, right? Well, well, like you said, or like Elon said, only the paranoid survive, right? I think that's, uh, I think, it, you know, that obviously is going to play a part about it, but you know, it's very, very interesting. Like, okay. Bunkers is like the new thing, like <laughs> that they're all doing. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, Actually, once I click that video, of course, like now I'm getting all these bunker videos, <laughs> DIY bunker, and like you know, the, the, <laughs> you know the easiest thinking. way to do the bunker is just literally with a container, like literally just make a hole and you just throw a container and maybe you do uh, you might have to reinforce it with concrete on the on the sides, but it's a very simple way to do it yourself. Um, it's not a 5,000 square foot <laughs> bunker, <laughs> but, uh, but it's a bunker. Um, I, th I think that, um, uh, one of the things that right now that I'm just, uh, thinking about it, maybe even solar flare, man, something like might not be even be human issue, might mm -hmm. be even a uh, spatial, right? Like an issue where like the sun suddenly just has a, a solar flare and man, you know, like, uh, toasted for a little bit. Right. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe they they've been seeing all the videos of the UFOs and stuff like that. They're, they they need a they need a hideout. Who knows? <laughs> right? We we don't really, we don't really know. Hey, speaking of uh, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan, Elon said if there were UFOs out there or aliens out there, I would know. I'd be the first to know about it. He says there there's not anything out there. I don't know. It sounds like he's not. That was a little bit too uh, a little bit too much. Like he's covering it up, right? It's because probably inside he has a little alien as well, right? <laughs> I know. It's the little thing inside, inside of his head, like, ah, say it does not exist, you know, and it's, uh... <laughs> that's how the neural link is going to plug into the little guy in his head. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyways, well, you know what? That's all we have for Billionaire Watch today. Um, and you know, that's all actually what we have for, uh, our, our podcast today. Hopefully you like what we, what we talked about. Just remember to like subscribe and comment. We'd love to hear y'all's comments. And please, if you want to see us grow, please like and share with your friends. It makes all the difference. We'll see you next time. All right. Dale. Dale.